Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So tell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Entertainment has always been an outlet from reality. No matter the culture, whether in the form of music or television, entertainment has something different for everyone. Different factors influence the content and the entertainment being consumed. But culture is often one of the most important elements in entertainment. The appropriation of entertainers in their work is not always immediately obvious to all the consumers of the entertainment, but members of the affected culture are quick to take notice. Cultural appropriation, as defined by Aboriginal activist Formil in 1996, she states that cultural appropriation is this. It's the adoption of a culture's element or elements into the identity of a member of another culture. Now, cultural appropriation also means a little bit more than that. Cultural appropriation is seen as taking from an already developed idea, but more accurately, it's profiteering from the hard work and talent and ideas of black creators by white artists who are viewed more positively by the media, thus classified as mainstream. We see this all the time in modern day culture with the likes of Charlie D'Amelio, Addison Rae, the Kardashians, and many more. Charlie D'Amelio is now considered an American dancer on her online profile, which is interesting because she's never taken a dance class. She's never been in drill team. She's not a choreographer, but yet and still she's seen as an American dancer. And what's interesting with that is that she can make anywhere from $1,800 to $2,000 a day, which adds up to $650,000 annually a year. And that's just from ads alone. That's not including big brand deals where she makes millions of dollars. Case in point, back in 2020, Dunkin' Donuts created a drink called The Charlie because of her viral TikTok videos that showed her dancing. That deal was worth millions of dollars. And she got that deal because she was taking dances that were being choreographed by black creators. Let's take, for example, the Renegade dance. The Renegade dance went viral all over TikTok. And basically that dance is what contributed to the popularity of Charlie D'Amelio. The original dance was created by an Atlanta teenager. She was only 14 at the time, and her name is Jalea Harmon. Um, Charlie later credited Jalea, but that was after a lot of pressure and backlash. They ended up doing a collaboration at the NBA All-Star Game in 2020. But outside of her being credited and doing the All-Star Game, Jalea hasn't really popped the way Charlie and Addison Rae have popped, okay? She still has a TikTok account, but she only has about 2 million followers. Meanwhile, Charlie has has, you know, probably five times as much followers. So it's very interesting how, you know, this dance that this 14 year old black girl created was able to be monetized fully by a white creator who took her dance and she was able to reap the benefits. But Jalea has never seen a Dunkin' Donut deal. She's never received money like that from ad revenue. So that situation definitely classifies as a modern day version of cultural appropriation. So welcome to Lovely Tea TV. I hope you guys are doing good. I want to tell you guys about some old school appropriation that nobody really speaks about. I want to introduce you to a black woman. Her name was Esther Jones. And if you don't know it, she was the original Betty Boo. So make sure you guys subscribe to this channel for more tea and we'll go ahead and get to the story. Many people remember her by her stage names, Baby Esther and Little Esther. Well, Esther Jones was one of the most recognizable figures in black history. She was an African-American child star who originally inspired the iconic cartoon character, Betty Boop. Unfortunately for Esther, she never received any credit for it. In fact, to this day, she's never received even royalties from the Betty Boop character. The early 1900s saw the birth of Esther Jones. The details of her early life are not really known, but Esther's career did begin to take off in the 1920s when she was almost six years old. She won first place in a Charleston concert in Chicago. Lou Bolton, a Russian-American theater manager, observed her performance and he hired her on the spot. Her debut appearance began in Chicago. Then Bolton arranged for baby Esther to perform in New York, Michigan, Canada, and many other locations before taking this child to Europe. 
Esther Jones was hardly ever referred to as baby Esther. She had various stage identities, but she was best known as Betty Boop. Esther Jones created a vocal style throughout her performance by employing boops and other innocent scat noises. In the late 1920s, Esther gained popularity for singing in a baby voice and frequently appearing in cotton clubs in Harlem. After seeing baby Esther perform, actress Helen Kane started using boops in her song. Her song was called I Want to Be Loved by you and she also used those same boops and other hits as well due to helen kane being more palatable to the masses she quickly wrote to stardom and she was credited with popularizing the whole boop boop badoot that entire scat line and she was also known for you know her baby style of music so because of this popularity, Helen Kane then became the subject of the Betty Boop caricature that the Fleischer Studio published in 1930s. Betty Boop was originally depicted as a dog, but as she gained more popularity, they altered her into a human being. Helen then turned around and sued Fleischer Studios after learning that her likeness and her vocal styles had been copied. Child the audacity, honey. So she wanted to sue somebody after she done appropriated from somebody else. How interesting. Anyways, the truth was uncovered when Helen Kane launched a lawsuit against Max Flesher, the animator who developed Betty Boop in 1930s. Helen never publicly acknowledged copying Esther's singing manner. Helen said that the Betty Boop cartoon was copying her and using her image for financial gain. The cartoon figure Betty Boop was first developed in the 1930s by Flesher Studios in Hollywood. After two years of legal dispute, it was decided that Helen Kane did not invent Betty Boop scatting. The lawsuit would ultimately reveal Esther Jones' actual identity as the creator of Betty Boop. Sadly, Jones did not get any royalties or performing credits. Helen allegedly mimicked baby Esther's singing technique after seeing her perform in a New York cabaret in April of 1928. Now, this comes from testimony from Lou Bolton, who was Baby Esther's original manager. He said in court that he trained a little Negro youngster named Esther Jones in 1925, and he showed her how to include scat lyrics such as boop, boop, be doo and what the da-da into her music. In 1928, Jones's manager testified that Helen Kane had seen 16-year-old Esther's performance at the Everglade restaurant. Now, Esther chose not to give any testimony at the trial, but after a two-year legal battle, Max Flesher discovered the footage of her performance from 1928, and it was presented as proof that the vocals, boop, boop, be doo and other similar sounds had been used by other artists outside of Helen Kane. The judge agreed with him. He also felt that Helen Kane did not develop or create the baby singing style or the scat noises. So at that point, he made his decision and Helen Kane lost her case. So even though she lost her case against the studio, what's very interesting is that the original Betty Boop, Esther Jones, was never credited or given royalties. Even though this video that they found of Esther Jones singing at 16 years old at the Everglade restaurant is what helped Max Flesher and his studio win the lawsuit against Helen Kane, a.k.a. the unseasoned bootleg Betty Boop, no one ever thanked Esther Jones or even cut her check for being the original black Betty Boop. So I can only imagine the frustration and the sadness that Esther felt because shortly after that, by the 1940s, she was done with the entertainment industry. At just 22 years old, she lost her luster to continue singing and dancing. And I believe that most likely came because of this lawsuit and her not getting any type of money for her likeness being used. But unfortunately, as a Negro woman back in the 40s, there wasn't much Esther could do. She didn't have the money to sue and nobody would even take her seriously. So she basically just took the L. She quit the entertainment business and she continued on with her life. Sadly, Esther Jones died in 1984 when she was 66 years old in New York City. She died from kidney and liver disease. Sadly, a lot of people do not know Esther's contribution to this world-renowned sex symbol, Betty Boop. A lot of people to this day still attribute Helen Kane to being the original Betty Boop. Granted, you know what I'm saying, her look was out there. She was more mainstream, but she did not create that character. She did not create the scats. She stole it from a 16-year-old black girl. So I'm making this video to tell young women like Esther Jones and Jalea Harmon to keep up their good work, keep their passion, you know, keep at it. Unfortunately, sometimes our thoughts, 
you know, our creativity are appropriated. You just got to keep fighting and keep shining and keep grinding and know that, you know, other people before you went through the same thing. So good luck to everybody out there making content. You know what I'm saying? Let's make sure that we support our black creators and give them their credit and their support because it is not easy making content. It is not easy, you know, being a creative. So when somebody steals from you, it, it's very hurtful. Remember that wonderful quote in the words of Erica Badu. I'm a artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. Now keep in mind that I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. No truer words were ever spoken. For real, for real. So on that note, I hope you guys take something away from this video. Did you know about the original Betty Boop? Did you know that the original Betty Boop was based off of a 16-year-old black girl? Did you know anything about Esther Jones? Did you know about the whole Helen Kane drama and her suing the studios? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. So hit the like button. Feel free to share the video. And make sure you're still subscribed to this channel. So thank you guys so much for taking time out to watch this. I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.